Hello, this is Caroline. Today we will talk about uh, breast cancer and uh, pap smears. Uh, we're just going to complete that section that we left out last time. So <clears throat> we're going to talk about breast cancer. And uh, one of the things that uh, we need to know when it comes to breast cancer is early detection. Now, with uh, breast cancer, they, it is checked either by yourself or by a provider, and uh, they do uh, mammograms. Now, it is important that between the age of 35 and 40, for you to go to your provider of choice and have an annual mammogram. The reason being is that will be considered your breast baseline uh, mammogram. And then once you get to the age of 40 to 50, then you will get to go every other year. And then once you get to the age of 50, then you will uh, be having it every year. Okay, now, you are wondering how to do the uh, uh, breast mammogram uh, exam by yourself. Now it is recommended that you do that after menstrual cycle and you can either do it, do it either standing up or laying down. If you choose to do it while laying down, then please make sure that you put a pillow under the shoulder of the breast that you'll be checking. So if you're doing the right, make sure you put it, you know, the pillow under the right shoulder. And then um, there are different ways to uh, palpate it, but make sure that you always start from your axilla, which is your armpit, because there are also lymph nodes um, up there, and uh, go all the way to um, the midline of your chest area. Now, you can either do it um, in wedges and wedges means uh, up down up down that kind of thing you can do it in circular motion you know in a circular motion um, now if you you always uh, need to stand in front of the mirror and look at both your breasts and then you have to bend down and observe how the um, breasts dangle in terms of if they're symmetrical or if there's anything abnormal you will be checking for any dimpling you will be checking for any bulging you'll be checking for anything puckering anything that is not normal you will either uh, your provider will follow up or you will let your provider know when it comes to breast cancer one of the treatments is surgery Okay, now there are different levels to the surgery depending on how extensive um, it has progressed to. Now you have uh, lumpectomy, okay? So lumpectomy is where um, it's just a small lump that they can go in and um, excise it and take it out. Um, or you could have a simple mastectomy. And a, a mastectomy means that they are taking out your entire breast, okay? Uh, they do have a radical mastectomy, but research has shown that it is not really necessary to do a radical mastectomy because with that one, they um, cut out the entire uh, muscle layer uh, down to the chest wall and um, that is too expen extensive so uh, most of the time they just do a modified uh, radical uh, mastectomy and for that one that one is more of um, just taking a small portion of your breast and uh, the chain of lymph nodes uh, down that arm um, so let's talk about uh, one of the medications that they do uh, offer when it comes to uh, breast cancer, the first one is uh, tamoxifen. Now, tamoxifen is an estrogen-dependent uh, uh, medication that prevents it. So it's an anti-estrogen uh, medication. And what it does is it brings down the uh, growth of the breast cancer, those cancerous cells. It limits how fast they grow. And most of the times the provider puts them on that medication for at least five years. Now I want you to remember this is um, a medication that is a chemo 
medication so you will always uh, make sure that you know for those who uh, still want to get pregnant and things like that and exposure is uh, always double glove uh, for when administering those medications um, now let's talk about tamoxifen when it comes to its side effects it does increase the chances of you getting blood clots and I want you to go back to med surge and remember how to test if someone has DVT other than ultrasound um, and re try to remember how do you do a Holman sign how do you do a Holman sign and what what are you expecting how do you perform the procedure for a Holman sign and uh, when it comes to DVT, then things like Lovenox and heparin come into play, and those are med surge related. So I'm just um, trying to bring in um, other parts to nursing into the picture here. Um, now, for that arm or that section that they have done the surgery on, um, especially the uh, modified radical mastectomy, please, please, please make sure that um, after the sur surgery or the procedure, keep that affected side above the level of the heart. And the reason being, you are trying to prevent lymphedema. Lymphedema is when you start having edema buildup in your lymphatic system and especially on that site because they've taken um, a portion of the lymph node um, chains um, for that arm. Now, also remember, for that patient, you will not do blood pressure checks on that arm, you will not draw blood on that arm, and the patient will not use that arm to lift things, okay? And that will help with increasing the chance of having lymphedema. Now, when it comes to breast cancer, this is something that takes an emotional toll on um, you know the people the patient involved and so for that you will always encourage support groups to join a form of support group uh, about breast cancer so that they can help emotionally deal with the things that they've experienced on a day-to-day -day basis because um, when it comes to NCLEX and the type of questions that they ask they will always ask things related to body image uh, concerns and that when it comes to body image concerns that's when dabda comes in and dabda comes in because um these are the stages of grieving okay so that's when they go to denial they experience some anger bargaining depression and acceptance and normally when it comes to grieving they say it takes up to two years if not more for somebody to go through the grieving process and there is no set way on how they will go through that um, they can either go back and forth between some stages so that is why we recommend um, the support group okay um, now after surgery there are certain exercises that they need to start on so on the day of the surgery or after the surgery they can do um, hand hand wrist elbow exercises and uh, those are just uh, simple exercises in motion and then after that then the next day they can start with uh, things like hair combing okay or um, wall climbing now you are wondering about uh, the wall climbing um, exercise and that one is when they get to run their fingers up and down the wall okay all right so we are done with breast cancer we're going to move over and talk about pap smear so when it comes to pap smear it comes um in different classes okay so when you perform the pap smear and they recommend you to do it is it annually okay and um there are different classes so class one is normal okay you go to your provider they do the uh, procedure they check it it's normal part two um that one is the a typical one and that one is uh, when you have infection okay when you have infection 
um, in your uh, vaginal wall. The third one, that one is called dysplasia, and that is when they observe abnormal cells. Now, it is not full-blown cancer, it is just abnormal. So they might do a procedure, and that procedure is called So that procedure is called econization. Econization is where the provider will um, go in and uh, take a piece, a piece of tissue uh, for your cervix and go and biopsy it, okay? Type four is cancer, unfortunately, but that cancer is a limited scope to it. Class five is invasive cancer and that's when it has gone past your uterine tissue and now it's either gone to your abdomen or you know you are finding mets in the lungs and things like that so that's class 5 um, which is invasive cancer now we had talked about HPV and I'm not sure if I had stated that HPV always poses the risk of you getting cancer. And that is why it is very important for us women to either have uh, the yearly annual exams, pap smear exams, and once we get to um, the age of 35, we can have the provider test for a mammogram. But meanwhile, between you know then and 35, we can always uh, assess ourselves and every year when we go for our annual exam the provider gets to um, assess us too so that is the section for breast cancer and um, pap smears we will continue at a later time thank you hello uh, this time we will now continue to a different section and this time we will be talking about HIV now, HIV is um, one of the diseases that there is no cure. It is one that affects us through virus. And um, our big issue here is concern during transmission, during childbirth. Now, it is very important once you know that the mother has HIV to try and uh, treat the mother so that that will reduce uh, chances of the child uh, getting HIV by 50%. And then after childbirth, we will continue to treat both mother and the baby, and we will uh, retest the baby to see if they are HIV uh, free. This is something that is uh, continuous up to at least two, two and a half years old, and uh, there has been proven results. The other thing that we will be discussing is the fibrocystic uh, breast disease, and that one is identified when you are experiencing painful cysts. They're very tender in your breast. Now, there are certain things that have been known to make it worse and aggravate it, one of them is coffee or chocolate um, or even Coke. Um, for some reason, it must be either the ingredient in it or something like that that um, makes it worse for a person that experiences this disease. Now, treatment could be either surgery or they might end up deciding to stop um, you from having any hormone stimulation uh, medication and normally that tends to resolve the issue.